Well, uh, this is the first Sunday of Advent, and uh, this is a season of going up to Christmas in which it's a time for preparation, for uh, preparing our hearts and minds and our lives uh, uh, to fully accept uh, God's breaking into our world in a radical way uh, with the birth of Christ. And um, so each week as we go forward, we'll be looking at the kind of preparation that uh, that God wants to have happen in each one of us, in, in me and, and in you. And, um, today, uh, the verse that I want to focus on was what was uh, read by Sheila at the lighting of the Advent candle. It's from Isaiah 40. Great prophecy. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim that her hard service has been completed, her sin has been paid for, and she's received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley will be raised up and every mountain and hill will be made low. The rough ground will become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Um, Lord, teach us from this word. Teach us from uh, this prophecy as we prepare our, ourselves to uh, accept you into our life and into our world. Show us what, uh, what kind of excavation you would do in us. And uh, that's our prayer today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, um, I'm not very good at, at waiting, you know, so this idea of waiting uh, for Christmas. Um, I was the one who... Um, uh, just seem to have a meltdown every Christmas season, and uh, um, so we'll get into that later. We don't have to talk about that today, but um, I was thinking about what is it that God wants to do in our lives, and I, I love the word excavation it, because it just seems so industrial, doesn't it? It just seems like you know God's going to come in and bulldoze our hearts, and uh, and and uh, we need to prepare the way for for the King. Uh, the prophet says. And I was thinking, where, where have I seen that happen in life? And it was a few years ago, um, I may have told you about this, I was visiting in uh, Kenya. It was my first time back in Africa since growing up there as a kid. And uh, felt like home because actually Kenya is like San Diego, <laughs> pretty much, Wild Animal Park. But um, uh, I, we had to go from uh, Nairobi up to the north part of the country where I was supposed to uh, teach at a Bible uh, college there. And I gotta tell you, I mean, you've been on Highway 5. I mean, you, you know what bad roads are like. I have <laughs> never in my life seen such horrible roads as, as in uh, Kenya. I, I prayed more than in that nine hour drive than I did probably in my whole time through seminary and being a pastor. It was. There were holes in the highway that literally you could bury elephants in. It was, it was like, wow, driving along and all of a sudden there's no road. And so we found ourselves most of the time driving in the ditches because they were safer and better roads than the highway. Um, it, it was really scary. Until we got up to the, to the town where the Bible College was and we came off the highway and turned towards the Bible College and there was like this new street. It was unbelievable. It was like smooth and shiny and fresh pavement and, and asphalt and just went right on up to the to the to the college and we went in and uh, uh, I, was, I was having lunch with the with the president of the college and, and I was saying, Why wow, you guys really do it right? I mean I, I haven't seen a road like this in, in a long, long time. This this is the, the best road in the entire nation. Uh, you guys must have put a lot of money and care into this. And he went, oh no, it didn't cost us anything. I go, well, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't make any sense. And he said, oh no, we, we got this idea. We, we called the president of the country and told him that we were going to give him a honorary doctorate <laughs> from our college. <laughs> And if he would come to the ceremony, we would honor him and he would receive his doctorate. And he said, no kidding, about two weeks before our graduation ceremony where the, the president was going to come, road crews came out and they <laughs> tore everything up and they smoothed it out and they bulldozed and they knew pavement and everything. So when the president 
got there, he rode up on the finest road in the whole country. And I thought, wow, that's preparing the way for the king. That's what that is. And it didn't cost them anything. And I thought, well, maybe something like that. If, if, if Jesus is breaking into our world in a, in a radical way, what needs to happen in us so that, so that we are able to, to receive him and accept him into our lives and, and, and receive the full benefit of God among us? What, what needs to happen? And uh, this, this passage is so great because it talks about the uh, preparation that goes on. Um, God wants to excavate our hearts. He wants to remove the boulders. He wants to level the rough areas. He wants to lift up the valleys. He wants to lower the mountains. It was kind of like when when uh, when David, Shazer, you and, and uh, yeah, you, Mark, you guys were out here. We had uh, the little place that's now the garden. That wasn't always that way. When we came here, that was pretty close to the pit of hell, wasn't it? <laughs> we found that it was an ancient burial ground for concrete, oh. broken up concrete that had been. Everybody in the place who remodeled their house dumped their old concrete right in there and then threw a shovel full of dirt over it. So we're wondering why nothing grows, you know, except more cement. And, uh, and, and Dave finally said, I can't stand this any longer. And, uh, and he went and rented a, a, a tractor. And in the rain, pouring, drenching, downpour, totally turned to mud, he and Mark slugged it out there and removed all of the big blocks of cement and the boulders and the... And the debris and everything and, and uh, hauled it off and what was left was a really workable community garden area that, that we could actually plant and things would grow. And, and I think about that because I think that's what God wants to do. He wants to get a bulldozer in on our hearts and on our minds and, uh, and accept that. He says one thing here in this passage that, that's always kind of bothered me. Where are we supposed to prepare the way? I always thought, you know, I'm a pastor, so I thought, well, you do it in the church, right? Uh, that's, that's a good place to be because that's where all the good people are, you know? People who have no problems are in church. So, so that's where you prepare for the Lord. And, and instead, what's he say? In the wilderness, make a highway for our God. Do it in the wilderness. Well, so I'm thinking about that. The wilderness. Um, the desolate places. The barren places, the lonely places, um, everybody's got a wilderness in their life. It's different for, for each of us, but we've all got them. Um, wilderness of loneliness, you just feel like you're cut off and lost along the way. There's, there's wildernesses of illnesses and medical treatments. There's, there's wildernesses of relationships. We're supposed to be easy and they're not, you know? Um, and then we find ourselves maybe married for years and lonely as can be in the middle of that relationship. Um, there's, there's wildernesses in our finances. And, uh, what are the three of them? Money, sex, and ego, the three things that always get us. Um, there's, a, there's a wilderness of each one of those. And this scripture is telling us that's where God wants to do his excavation in our lives. In the places that we would rather not go, where we don't feel comfortable, where we don't necessarily want to be, and, uh, and that's where he wants us to do the work. Um, the valleys are going to be brought up, and the, and the mountains, the, th the things we're most proud of, that's going to be leveled off a little bit there. And uh, God's going to do something new and radical in our lives if we would let him in the very places where our needs are the greatest, but we don't want to go. The wilderness was the place where Jesus went with for his temptations. It's the place where we go when we don't like who we are anymore. And that's where the highway is made, right through it. Because what that's saying is that when God breaks into our world in a radical way, he's going to do it in the lonely places. He's going to break in in the places that will surprise us and will shock us and not where we're doing really good. You know, I, I'm always happy. You know, when, when there's a few times in my life when I'm doing really good, that's when I want, you know, the Lord to kind of, hey, notice this, you know. And, and he's off. No, no. But why don't you call me when you get to those other, that are so many where you have troubles, you know. Um, and 
that's where he wants to work with us. So I'm thinking about as we prepare for Christmas and we move towards, uh, through Advent and towards the celebration of, of Jesus breaking into our world, I want you to be thinking about what's the wilderness for you? Maybe you have more than one. Maybe you've got a bunch of them like me. And uh, these are the places where you need Jesus to meet you. And, and, and I, I'll give you a homework assignment this week. Jot it down. Say, Lord, I need to meet you in this area. This is the, the area where things aren't working. This is the area where uh, I'm really struggling right now. This is the area where I need you to show up and make a difference. Make that your, your prayer. And the, and the excavation will begin in your heart. Now, one of the gifts that, that, uh, that Jesus gave to us um, was that uh, he said that when he was with his, his followers, his disciples, and, and they were eating together, um, he, he gave thanks, and then he, he took bread, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you torn apart for you. Take it and eat. And in doing that, we, we take Christ into us, into our wilderness places, into our fears and hopes and failures and celebrations and all of those things. And we say, Lord, come into my life. Be Lord of my life. The whole thing, the, the messy parts and the, and the tidy parts. And... Uh, and he comes into us and sustains us and strengthens us and nurtures us. And then, same night, said after giving thanks, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant, the new promise in my blood poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. <clears throat> Take it and drink for the forgiveness of sins, for a fresh start, for a new beginning, for not looking back, not kicking yourself perpetually like I try to do, which is, Maxine told me, is physically stressful. Um, <clears throat> allow God to do something new and start over in your life. Allow yourself to be forgiven and, and renewed. So we're going to share this. And this isn't the table of the Christian Reformed Church or Harbor Church or West Falls House or anything like that. This, this is the table of the Lord. And, and if you'd say yes to Jesus, then uh, take the bread and, and eat it as a symbol of your relationship with him. And, and hold the cup until everybody's been served. And then we'll all take it together as a, as a symbol of our unity together as, uh, as God's people. And uh, so... Servers, let me pray this. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the tangible reminder of your presence and your power in our lives and your purposes in our world. And as we prepare our hearts to receive you and to <coughs> and to invite you in, say yes to you, as you break into our world. We pray that you take these really common elements bread, the cup, and, and make them uncommon by your grace. We need you, we love you, and uh, give us the courage to follow you.